you know, I think I'll start just jumping right into it. It's five past now. So welcome, everyone. Thanks for jumping on. Um, no need to introduce Barry Jenkins. We all know Barry, but I do want to introduce Darren Shaw. Um, Darren's joining us today. He is, what's your official title? Are you CEO? Are you a co-founder? Yeah. I think you need to have a board of directors to use like cheap uh, titles. I never took the CEO one. I always laughed at like, like my contemporaries that are like CEO, but it's like they have like two people in the company. So I always <laughs> think that, that's kind of funny. So I just, I always went with founder or president. I think my actual like title in, on the official records is president, but I just go with founder. Nice, nice. Yeah. So Darren is the founder. Um, of a company called White Spark. Um, you know, I dove into GMB, Google My Business, local SEO stuff, with Barry specifically around real estate about just under a year ago now. And I looked at a lot of different companies that can help in the process because there's a certain parts of Google My Business which you don't want to have to deal with. Um, and a big one for me were what they call the citations which is your business name, address, and phone number. And those get distributed, picked up by these um, conglomerates or well, what's the technical term for them, Darren? The, the ones aggregators. Do, aggregators, the aggregators. Yeah. And once they get hold of it, then it goes everywhere. And then if you move your business or you change your phone number or change your name, now you've got conflicting name, address, and phone number out there, which is a big no-no for Google. Um, so making sure all of those listings are correct um, in all the places that matter is a big part of the algorithm, but it's something that's just very time consuming and tedious. So I really wanted someone else to do that who's really good at that stuff. And I looked at multiple companies, um, used multiple companies, and WhiteSpark was the one I really liked the most because they did everything manually and they only charged a one-time fee to do all of that work. You know, a lot of these other companies out there, they were a little bit cheaper up front, but they would keep charging you over and over and over and it was all automated and half the time the work just wasn't getting done. So that's where I came across WhiteSpark and started using some of their other tools and just found um, a lot of really, really useful information, reached out, the customer service was awesome, was able to connect with Darren a couple of times and um, that's why I've got him on here today, just because you know we did a webinar a month or so ago, it was very successful, and we talked mainly about your GMB account, claiming the account, uploading photos, uploading posts and products, and really optimizing that. But there's a lot of other things that go into ranking locally for a local SEO that we didn't get to cover. Um, so let me share my screen really quick so I can sort of talk about the stuff I want to cover today. Um, so I guess, yeah, before we do that, you know, the big opportunity here really is for real estate agents is that a lot of agents don't know, they haven't even claimed their listing. And if they have claimed their listing, they don't know what to do with it, right? So massive opportunity by just by claiming and then checking all the right boxes. And the other thing is Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, these big portals out there, they don't have the local businesses. They don't have the local um, brick and mortar addresses to compete with you on in this sort of type of SEO. So this is the big opportunity. Um, so I want to go over what I, you know, I think are the top five. And, you know, Darren, you know, this, I want to sort of ask a lot of questions to him throughout this because... Nobody knows this better than him. This is all he's done for how many years now? Uh, well, I'd say officially like 15, but I've, I've, I've actually got into it like in the late 90s, just dabbling in a little bit of SEO. So I've been doing web development since the like mid 90s. Yeah. Yeah. When, when the Packard Bell computer came with Windows and the Weezer audio, uh, I forgot it was Windows 95, I think. Yeah, so, right. yeah. yep, basically since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Website making, like making websites for sure. That's why I, I took uh, computing science. And so it's, it's, been, it's been a long time. I really got into SEO once I started building websites for businesses. And then they were like, hey, you made my website. Why isn't it ranking in Google? So then I had to figure that out. So, yeah. Awesome. So I got into it. 
But yeah, hey, yeah. five. Those are totally the five. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So, you know, on the first webinar we did, um, I talked a lot about number one, which is optimizing your Google My Business account, um, up, you know, making sure the description's right, you're posting, you're using pictures, you're using the geotagging, creating categories, creating products, all of that good stuff. So all of that is in the first webinar. Um, and I can... Uh, well, actually, let me just go back. Um, if you guys don't have that, just email me, kiwi at wailopo.com, and I'll make sure you get that. But you can also find it on wailopo.com forward slash media, and you're going to be able to scroll down there, and you'll find that webinar. Um, also, this webinar will be recorded and posted up there later today. Um, the other thing we talked about a little bit last time were citations, which is the name, address, phone number. Um, again, my recommendation is... Um, you know, well, actually, one of the things is WhiteSpark is coming out with a tool soon, so you're going to be able to review and find how you look in all of those places. They're basically going to go out and find them all and find any indiscrepancies um, and alert you of those. Um, that tool is in beta, but Darren did agree to sort of run a couple of tests for us to sort of show how it looks, how it works. Um, I don't know if we're still on for that. Is that still possible? Yes. I totally yeah. forgot. Sorry. <laughs> I, can, I can do it in real time. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, just do it in real time. Um, yeah. You've got the tool there. It doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, this is, again, it's in beta. Um, and I think, you know, that's something for everyone to be aware of, but it's also something you can outsource. Um, WhiteSpark does a great job. I think they've got one product for 300 bucks, and they will probably spend two to three months going through and manually updating and changing in all those places for you so that everything matches up. Um, so that's something that you don't really need to focus on too much, but you do need to know the importance of it. Because if you've moved addresses recently, that's gonna be a problem for local SEO. The other thing is this whole webinar is designed for people or businesses with an actual address. If you are sharing an office and you're on a team with 50 people and they all share that office and they're all trying to do this, that's a problem, right? Because they're all competing with that actual location and that muddies the waters a little bit. Um, there are still ways to do it. Um, but generally, you know, this is for the business owners. This is where people have got a location and they want to generate more local traffic. People who are searching for a realtor, a real estate agent, best realtor, best real estate agent near me, all of those sort of terms. Um, and then, so the big three I really want to focus more on today that we didn't cover last time that are incredibly important as well, uh, the getting reviews, um, getting backlinks, and then what we call on-page SEO, which is creating content on your website that ranks inside Google, that has all the right sort of keywords and terms on it, so you get more Google traffic. Um, so we'll go through these separately, but um, number three here, reviews. So. I'm keen to hear, Darren, um, from you. Actually, do you want to go over the citation stuff now? Do you have that up? Is that something we can share, or would you rather hold on? Oh, you want to start with that? Um, yeah, I could blast that out real quick. Okay. Uh, I just, I'm going to start with this. This is something that I really want to touch on. So there is this concept in local search that it's important for your citations to be consistent and accurate on all the sites. So you hear that mantra repeated over and over and over. And I want to make sure everybody listening knows that it's, you don't have to take it to the ends of the earth. Um, so a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I got the, my suite number is in a different format on this site than it is on this site. They're not exact, they don't exactly match. Or let's say, you know, my address is formatted with AVE on this site and Avenue on this site. Those kinds of discrepancies are totally fine, and I want to explain why. Uh, Google, as it, as it collects data from around the internet, it's like, oh, here's a mention of this business. Here's their address. Here's another mention of this business. Here's their address. Those addresses, they get run through what's called a normalizer. So it's a piece of code that takes the address, runs it through there, and then gets the normalized version of it. And so that slight variation and this slight variation will all normalize to the same address in the end. 
So you don't have to worry about small little discrepancies. And Google's also very good at slight name variations. So for example, let's say your business name, I have an example right here, is Home Sales Co. LLC. So on some sites, it's Home Sales Co. On some sites, it's Home Sales Co. LLC. You also don't need to worry about discrepancies like that. Those things are not gonna hurt your uh, ability to rank. Those are normal discrepancies that Google encounters all the time with business listings. And it knows how to be like, yeah, the partial name match, the address matches, the phone matches, this is definitely the same business. You're gonna get credit for that business listing. So it's really important to not go too far with your citation consistency. Phone numbers are one that you probably wanna be consistent with, but I also have a trick for that too. So um, what do you think? You wanna, you wanna run the scan tool? Yeah, let's see your scan tool. Um... Doesn't I gave you a couple of examples. We've got a couple of clients there. I sent examples over. Let's see how that <laughs> Yeah, so let me, uh, let me bring up the tool. Okay, so first of all, this tool is super beta, and uh, we haven't got like a nice design on it yet. That's actually happening this week. But uh, here, let me run a new search here. Um, Your way of saying street. it's ugly, but it works. You can check <laughs> out ugly. It looks okay. It gets, gets the concept around. And you can just, whenever you're ready, you can share your screen as well. We can't see it yet. Yep, just doing it right now. Screen shared. How about now? Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So this is our listing auditor scanner tool. And then I, I threw these businesses in here. So Home Sales Co., the Baird team. This is, this is, this is the first public unveiling of this tool. <laughs> so here's the business name. Um, what I'm going to do is because I put this partial name in here. So I want to actually, if I put this in, then the tool is going to be like only matching these exact matches. I want just that so that it like finds all the different variations. So now we've got uh, 79 East Prentice Ave. Right here. What was that sweet number? It was 205. City is um, Greenwood Village, Colorado. I'm cutting and pasting as fast as I can here. <laughs> Colorado. 80111. Gonna get that phone number. It'll be interesting to see what we get We're just off the cuff with this. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the domain. This is, it's really cool too. You can put your website in and it'll show you, like if you've ever changed your website URL, it'll help you find all the listings that, um, that are actually have your old website URL. And so you can update those. Let's see what happens. So results coming in now. All right. So, so results will sort of come in as it scans. There are other scan tools out here. Like there's the X scan tool. Um, uh, Moz Local has a scan tool. I'm just gonna tell you, they're, they're total garbage. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, uh, they only seem to return like one listing and then they only seem to show you like, like they all have some kind of error. Like a lot of the listings be like, oh, error. But like actually your Bing listing is correct. It's got the right name, right address, right phone number. So it's like when we look at MapQuest, and this is the thing, like on any other tools on MapQuest, it'll be like, oh, you only have one listing and it's correct. It'll be like this one here. Whereas our tool will be like, you have three listings, two of them are incorrect. They have, look at this, here's a, there's three listings on MapQuest, two of them have the wrong phone number. And now here we have, uh, this is a practitioner listing. So Misty Anderson is probably one of the realtors there and she's got, uh, she has her, uh, listing here now the website look at that I don't, maybe we're not trying oh yeah the website's wrong it says wrong website because it's it's linking to this other one so MapQuest we can see there's three listings here's a listing on TomTom Tom. doesn't have a website URL here's a listing on US info wrong phone number so this is what the tool does and then it'll show you all the sites that oh you don't have a listing on any of these sites we didn't find one wow that's a lot so I so here this tells me right off the bat so this company right here I would say this this realtor has a few inconsistencies. I probably wouldn't care too much about fixing these. They're not gonna make or break your SEO because they're pretty, they're kind of minor. Um, 
you know, if I would do this personally, like within the, within the realty company, I'd be like, oh, can you go to MapQuest and fix these listings? I wouldn't necessarily hire our team to do it because I don't see a huge mess. But what I would do is I would do citation building because wow, look at all these sites you don't have any listings on. So that would be the takeaway from this one. And actually that's the whole point. When we build our public scanner, it will be like, you scan your listings and then we try to guide you. It'd be like, this is what we think you should do. Don't bother signing up for audit and cleanup with us. Just go straight to, to building and here's a package for you. So there you go, that's our listing scan tool. And so I, we're getting some really good questions um, that I don't cool, want to bog us down just yet. But you know, I think sometimes as realtors, um, we're really just more focused on somebody contacting us online to show a home. And yep. you know, I was telling Kiwi, and I don't remember if I you were on when I was saying this to him, but I've, I've never had, no, you were on the volume of inbound. Hi, I found you online, like emails, just like, or a voicemail. Hi, Barry, I was researching online and mm -hmm. I've been number one on Yelp in my market for a long time. And even that didn't produce what this is producing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, do you foresee, cause when you're searching for an agent, the, there's only three postings right and if, I, if i'm hijacking the flow just tell me you want to talk about it later but yeah no because it. like you know what city are you in? Kiwi, what's that what city are you in again virginia beach virginia and okay when kiwi sent me my report and i think it, kiwi was it white sparks report that, yeah yeah okay i was like 60 percent of and there's ten thousand agents in in my area so um 60% of the time showing up as one of the top three. Mm -hmm. um, that's not me. None of those are actually. But I'm also searching from Canada. I'll get different results than what someone actually oh, sure. sitting in Virginia would see. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's phenomenal. But I have noticed that certain phrases like best or top or whatever produce different lists. Um, totally. So I don't, I don't know what always that's different, about, but. always different results. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're always talking, everything that we're kind of talking about here, the, the five things you need to focus on that, uh, that Kiwi mentioned are related to ranking in this pack. Cause this pack is, has massive visibility. Let's say you're looking for a realtor. What do you do? You go to Google type in a key phrase like this. And now you've got a bunch of ads. People are blind to ads. You've got this huge local pack with a map. It's all these stars and colors and it really stands out and they got all this stuff underneath here, right? So what are you gonna be drawn to? Everyone is drawn to this local pack because it really stands out in the local results. And then when you click through, you've got, this is called the local finder. And so you can learn everything about these businesses. And so it's really important. I think, you know, you, you guys already did a webinar on all the benefits of GMB and all the things you should be doing in here. But when you take the time to really update this and get good reviews coming in and you've added your products and you've added your services, it's just, this is the way to sell these days. This is why so it's so I'm important. in the bottom left of the map, the Barry Jenkins Better Homes. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah. So you're actually on this. Here's your listing. Looking good with that 5.0 rating. Yeah. I, like, like, I like this too. Appointments link. So many people miss this. There's like so many things that you can add here. Oh, look at your awesome products. This is great. I can, I can see uh, so much more about you. So there you go. Case in point, your listing stands out. You've got all this extra information. It's more of these categories. Oh, look at this happy guy. I want to definitely hire this realtor. He looks friendly. I like the look of him. He, you know, this is actually important too. Like um, how you're, profile photo looks is very important. I, I think every realtor knows this because they've all got their faces plastered on, on bus advertising, but they, they know how important it is to have like a good friendly picture. But honestly, this, your, your listing speaks to me. You've got these posts like this just says so much more information. So I don't know. I get, we got yeah. off the citation topic, but yeah, well, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, one of the other things we figured out last time doing, doing some research um, is, it's actually really helpful to have a 3D tour included in your listing, right, Darren? Yep. Yeah, it's, it doesn't help your ranking. So it does not help your ranking unless there's an indirect benefit. The indirect benefit could be we believe that Google is tracking, um, Google is tracking like engagement on your listing. So the more time you spend on a, a person is spending on your listing, the more things they're clicking on, 
they, we believe they're factoring that in and be like, wow, people are really engaging with this listing. It must be good. And so when you put the virtual tour on there, it could help increase engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, most of our clients have ability to do virtual tours already for their own you know, listings. So yep. doing one for your office, um, we highly recommend you do right. that. Yep. Um, it's just something that a lot of other people wouldn't have thought of. Um, yep. So another question here, um, I'm having trouble adding a member of the white spot team as a user to my GMB account, the icon user, oh, this is Rob Kittle. Um, user is not showing up type. Okay. Any ideas how to fix that? He's just trying to add a, yeah, I don't know. It shouldn't be too difficult. We, we can work with you on that afterwards, how to add someone to your account. Um, yeah. You just go into GMB and then there's like add users and then you'll put in the code. And so I, I think your account manager will have, we'll give you details on, on how to do that. And we can also, one thing we'll totally happily do, jump on a screen share with you and walk you through it. Perfect, perfect. You yeah. know, a few people are saying they'd sign up for Moz. They're like, oh no, not so good, bummer. Um, you know, not a big deal. I mean, Moz is still gonna help. Um, totally. I just felt like, you know, um, I, I just like white spot better personally, but it's not wasted money. I mean, if they're gonna go ahead and clean up citations, that's awesome, that's all you need done. But I would say, you know, the one thing I definitely recommend you all use from White Spark, which we use a lot, is the, uh, the tracking and the recording. Um, or oh, rank tracker. Yeah. Rank tracker. Let me just share my screen really quick. And I can show you guys, like, different accounts that, like, for example, like Matt Curtis here. Um, so if I can go back and I look at the beginning of time since we started with Matt, um, and it hasn't been that long. I think this goes back to April 16th through the July 23rd since we've been working on this. He yep. was getting a 9% visibility in his local search results. Now he's getting 52%. Um, Magic. I love, this is why I love this tool so much because you do this all the time and you can see the yeah. impact. Uh, it really measures it. This is a magical account. Love it. Yeah, it's great. And you can see all the different keywords that you want to rank for. So, for example, best realtor. And you base it on location, right? Because local SEO is all about where you're located. It doesn't matter if someone's typing in best realtor and they're in New York and you're in L.A., right? So, it's all location-based. But he's ranking, like, number one. And he wasn't on the first page. He was off the first hundred. He wasn't even on the first, like, ten pages, right? So yep. now he's number one, number two, number three for all of these terms, best realtor, best real estate agent, real estate agency, real estate agents near me, all these terms. Um, wow. And so it's just, you know, it's a great tool. If you guys are going to invest time to do all of this SEO work, this local work, you want to be able to make sure that it's actually working for you um, and you're getting the results you want. The other thing I really like with this tool is you can see over time how you rank versus your competitors. So I put in his number one competitors in the area and I'm tracking all them as well. So, you know, Matt is down here in the green. When we started, he was pretty low, right? His competitors were all kicking his butt, all three of these guys. Then he sort of came up, he took out this guy, then he took out that guy. Now he's consistently above them all. Um, awesome. And you can see, like, during coronavirus, there was a dip. We started, then all of a sudden he went backwards. That happened to just about everyone. Um, so not a big deal. Ever since then, he's been rising. Now he's sort of consistent. Um, so I do recommend you guys, you know, if you're doing this, use the White Spark tool at least for tracking if you don't want to use them for the citation stuff. Um, there is a discount code you can use, um, which we'll share with you at the end. Um, but this product is, I think, is it like a hundred bucks for for the year or something? Well, you could get it if you're only going to track like a small amount of keywords. You can get it for pretty cheap. I don't know what our loss plan is, but for any single realtor, it's probably enough. Um, but it's uh, I got to look at the pricing. Yeah. It's okay. well, it's, let me ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. So I haven't logged into this. Kiwi sent me a couple of screenshots here and there, and when let's say I log in and yep. I look at these terms and yep. some of them I'm not ranking well on, yeah. what do I do? Um, I would actually, in that case, depending on the term, 
It also, the interesting thing about how you set up the rank tracker is that rankings really differ depending on where you're searching from. So if you were to sit on your phone and you ran a search for a realtor near me and you were in your office, you probably rank number one. It's like, near me? Oh, here you go. There's one right here. And so Google, Google will really uh, impact your rankings based on proximity. And so what I like to do is I set up these campaigns where I track for multiple zip codes around the city. So I can see how I rank in this neighborhood or this neighborhood. And I particularly, from a real estate perspective, would definitely put in the zip codes of the affluent neighborhoods that you target as a realtor to make sure you're tracking for there. Like if I'm looking for a realtor and I want to sell my home in this neighborhood, I want to see how do I rank in that neighborhood. And that's where I would focus. And I would do a couple of things to your question. I would make sure I have a dedicated page about that neighborhood. I would make sure that it's optimized with the keywords that I want about that particular neighborhood. And it wouldn't just be, here are the listings we have in that neighborhood. You need content. You got to have a few paragraphs of text. You should reference some landmarks in the neighborhood. You should reference the neighborhood community league with their address. All of that stuff helps anchor that page and give you some relevance for that particular term. So you want to rank better for this term. It's usually uh, tweaking some on-site stuff. And then another uh, pro tip there is that your homepage has most of the link authority coming into it. Most, most links are going to your homepage. And so you gotta make sure that you're funneling that link authority to those new pages. So I would then, if I really wanna focus on this neighborhood, I would then take a paragraph of text, put it on the homepage and say, we specialize in homes in this neighborhood. And then that would link to that page with all the more stuff, right? And so they'll put those two things together, you'll definitely see a lift in, in uh, rankings for those specific terms. And so Kiwi sharing, um, basically that's what, that's what this is, right? Waterfront homes for sale? Yes. Yeah, waterfront agent? Exactly. So, you know, this is more for, um, but you can do the same thing, right? You can do it for an actual agent. You know, if you're looking for an agent in a certain area, you can add a page with more information around that. Yep. This, this here is more for a property type search. So people looking for waterfront properties for sale in Virginia Beach, right? Yep. Then you're actually going to rank for that. And we've added in a lot of local content around that and linked to it done some research, added in some photos, or making sure everything's geotagged to that location, right? This is it, this is, it. This is the example right there, do this. Yeah, perfect. And, and then we actually, on top of that, we show the actual properties pulled from your IDX feed yeah. that are exactly waterfront homes in Virginia Beach, right? So this has the, if you were just doing this piece by itself, it's not gonna work um, as well or at all, just because it's all duplicate content, this is all yep. content that's pulled from the MLS that everyone else has, right? So you want to exactly. add, you want to add unique elements to the page, which make it custom and make it stand out from everything else that's the same. Um, Kiwi, are you tracking this one in the rank track or waterfront homes? No, not yet. We just oh, too bad. I want to see the before after when you did this page update. Yeah, so this is something new, and this is one of the things I wanted to talk about about today, about on-page SEO, creating long-form content. So, and what sort of content you can create on your sites um, that are going to help with your local SEO, right? Um, yeah. Totally. So I wanted to share some examples of what we've done with Barry. Um, but, you know, just before we go too deep into that, um, you know, reviews. So... What are some strategies that you've heard to help with reviews, Darren, that, that could be helpful? For sure. So I'd love to talk about reviews. There's one final thing I want to say about citations uh, before we move on to reviews, just so we can wrap that, that piece up. I showed that example through the listing scanner where I would say you should build some more citations. And um, I want to give a, a caveat about that, that there's a, a limit of diminishing returns. Some, some businesses will be like, I'm going to build 100, 200, 300 citations. So these are all, a citation is typically a mention of your business on a business directory of some kind, right? I, I would caution you against that. Don't waste the time or the money on it. There's a limit of value. Like once you kind of get past the top, like 50, 60, you're, you're going to get really diminishing returns in terms of the benefit to your business of, of going to like 200. So, you know, the question is like, how many citations should I build? 
for that company that we did the scan for, I would say place an order for like 50 citations and call it a day. Yeah. Awesome. All right. On to reviews. What do you do for reviews? So the real estate business has an excellent opportunity here. So if, if I'm talking about a retail company or a restaurant, they don't have that close personal interaction with every client to, to be able to solicit the kind of review that a realtor can. The best, they should all use a software based system where they just, they put their mailing list, they get emails, they put them into the system and the, it, they, it automates the whole process. Cause we're talking about like 100, 200 customers a day in some cases, right? So, but a realtor has this great opportunity to really dial in reviews. And I will tell you our strategy that we use in our GMB management service for all of our clients there that works so well. And this is it. Whenever a new client signs up, we generate these cards for them. It's like a, it's business card style. We order them through Canva. So we have a template in Canva that we use and it's got, please leave us a review on Google. And then we use, we have a tool on our website. Maybe someone will paste it in the chat. It is uh, the Google review link generator. So we generate this link and then we run it through a, sh a link shortening tool. And then we put that code on the card. So it makes it really easy to type in. But this, this is the big thing that most people miss. I think since iOS 13 came out, um, scanning a QR code is natively built into the operating system on almost every new modern smartphone. So we also put a QR code on the, font, on, the on the card. So the card has like, please leave us a review on Google. Here's the link and there's a QR code. And we tell, we tell our customers to tell their clients, when you give this card out, tell them about the QR code because all they have to do is point their phone at this and it'll automatically go to instantly leave a review. So that card is, is really helpful to create this sort of physical piece of something that really helps to secure the review. So at the end of the, the close, you've, you've sold the house, you've signed all the paperwork, uh, the deal is done. When you're handing the paperwork, include this card and ask it, ask for it personally. Be like, hey, would you be, uh, you know, I hope everything went well. You're thrilled with your purchase. Or you're thrilled with your sale. Uh, we'd really appreciate a review on Google. It, it really helps our business. Uh, would you mind leaving us a review on Google? Every, almost everyone's going to say yes. They're going to say yes. And then you say, awesome. I want to make it easy for you. Here's a little card. You can just point your phone at this QR code and it'll take you right to leave a review. i people like, oh, okay, cool. And then that card ends up on their desk and then they have to keep staring at that card. And so they'll eventually uh, leave you that review. And so our, our review acquisition is probably 10 times higher than some automated system. Now we sell an automated system. We actually have a software platform called Reputation Builder and it, it automates the whole process. It provides a number of benefits. But if your goal is strictly reviews on Google, the manual heartfelt in-person ask with the card is going to drastically increase your review acquisition rate. Some businesses are not even asking. And so number one, just start asking for a review. At the very least, send an email. Um, but uh, this card method is really helpful. Yeah, I, um, oh, go ahead, Barry. Well, uh, I just wanna share the review filter real quick so everybody can see what we've already baked into the Wilopo site. Yeah. Uh, and Kiwi's, Kiwi's already regretting asking me to do this with him because I keep interrupting, but it's okay. Um, so this is my website. You go to team and then all of my agents, you know, have this write me review. Yes. And, do this and too. what we did was um, I like to automate stuff um, yep. because uh, anyway, um, so if you do, if you do like three stars and you hit submit, you get a form. If you do anything over, I think it's four stars, then you go to this and then yep. there's, um, and then you click this and it actually, is this what you were talking about? Cause this actually goes to yep. the page. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. And you should put so, Google first uh, though. Put Google on the top of that list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we can set it up or you, any of you guys can set it up inside, um, inside your square space site um just to show google if you wanted to yeah yep. yeah so, yeah, so I, I like the combination of both of those actually because you're doing the funnel your card could actually link to your own website rather than linking to directly to google and so then you can do your funneling thing and and send them one way or the other so yeah. that 
is a little bit sketchy. So Google released a guideline about two years ago called review gating. And they said that you could potentially get your reviews removed if you do this thing called review gating, which is exactly what that is. It's like you rate me three or less, you only see the form, you rate me right. four or higher, you go to the review sites. That's called review gating and it is potentially an area of a trouble where Google could end up being removing your listings. I will tell you they do not police that. So it's in the guideline, but it's like the chance of you actually getting any harm from it is so low. Like the risk is so low. You would, you would actually have to have people report I've you. I've never heard of the, the, the term of review getting. So that's interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't it's know in the guidelines. You're thing. not supposed to do it, but there's a really quick fix to it. On your page that has the form, just mm -hmm. say, or you can leave us a review on Google. It's really small, fine print underneath. There you go. You're not review getting anymore. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Do that. Yeah, no, you've I'll solved, do that. You've solved your problem. So, yeah, uh, no, I'll do that. Yeah, I don't want to break any rules. <laughs> well, there you go. And then, and then you're completely within the rules. So you just put that little link there. And that's actually how our software does it too. So our software will do this exact same kind of funnel thing. And so it's like, if you rated three or less, you get presented with huge form. Oh, we, we really want to make it better. Please give us feedback. And then it's like fine print or leave us a review on Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, that's it's the same good. concept. That's good. Cool. So yeah, so we've really noticed, you know, a big increase in results when a client is consistently getting reviews, you know, 100%. It does two things. One rankings yeah. definitely go up. And two, your leads go way up because it's like your reviewers, all those people writing those nice reviews for you become your sales team. It's like, I'm shopping for a realtor. I click this guy, Barry, I'm like, oh, wow, look at all these nice things people are saying, sold. Look at this friendly face. Look at these nice reviews. This is the guy. I'm going to hire this guy. Yeah. So I actually did an uh, interview yesterday with a client of ours called um, Taylor Hack, who's in Alberta, Edmonton, um, Canada. He That's is. My hometown. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually one of the top bomb bomb influencers, uh, has been for a while. Bomb bomb does video stuff. I don't know if you're aware of them. Um, and he's massive with video. Um, and he mentioned his strategy was he gets all his reviews sent to a company called rank my agent. And yeah. for them, they rank really, really high in the local, in the SEO. And he's yeah. the number one guy on rank my agent. So his strategy is a little bit different, but his strategy was all in with one, right? So, and he's, his, another thing he said to me, it's really resonated is just the power of the thank you. Um, anytime someone says thank you, it's an opportunity to ask for something at that stage. Don't just say, oh yeah, no worries, right? Or, or go, Good. you know, say Good. something, I'll say something along the lines of, oh, I know you would have done it for me, right? And yep. they're like, oh my God, thank you, thank you. And, but look, do you mind, you know, if you can write me a review, if I send you a link, can you just do me this one thing, it'll be super helpful. So don't yep. ever, you know, you know, that's sort of just a, the timing of when to ask is really important, I think, in real estate. So do it when a lot of the contingencies are removed, when they know that, that they're getting the house, when they're really ready to celebrate and a lot of the pressure's off and they're the happiest, most genuine time of the trans of the process. Totally. That's such a good time to ask, yeah. and don't be afraid. And don't I wouldn't just ask by sending them an email or sending them a text message, right? I would use wait Taylor does it. He does a nice bomb bomb video saying, "Oh my God, thank you so much, congratulations. This is a huge moment, right?" And he celebrates it with them, and he asks in that video just one thing. You know, if I could just ask for one thing, if you could just write a review. And then when they write a review, he actually sends them cookies, right? And he says, oh, thank you. Uh, and then he will then um, go, oh, you want to go again, <laughs> right? And then he, and a lot of times then he'll ask for the second place or the other place he wants a review sure. in, right? Yeah. But yeah, he yeah. always goes all in with one place first um, before he tries to give them three options and he gets a none out of three, right? So if you're going to go one place first that, oh my God, make that Google, like rate my agent. Sure. Great. But, and I think that's so secondary and he's probably already built up his profile so big on rate my agent. Yeah. I would immediately shift everything to Google because when you run that search, you know, realtors, Virginia beach, you see the Google results. You rate my agents like down on the, those blue links that don't get any visibility. And so 
Um, you're definitely going to drive ranking or drive leads from rank my, rank my agent, but he's, he's done it like yeah. mission accomplished, get those Google ones through the roof and you're going to see another lead stream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he can be in two places now rather than one. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I thought that was, you know, I love that tip getting a, bit, a card printed out where you can put the QR code on it and give that to them as well. If you're doing a video, thank you. And you're sending them a card, man, you're going to get really high conversion on these. Wow. If I could get my clients to do a video, thank you. That would be super next level. Most, most people are not yeah. putting in that kind of effort. I love it though. Yep. Yep. So cool. So, you know, the reviews is a big, big deal. I just want to make sure everyone realizes this because we can be doing everything. You can be doing everything that we've taught you so far, but if you have no reviews, someone else can come along with five reviews, right? And um, they can potentially just be beating you. So I, I would actually rank it as the number one thing for you to invest in. Uh, it is in my mind, the most important tactic Forget about any other SEO. If you just start investing in reviews, that will pay dividends. And it pays, it's like this, it's like when you invest in your money into the stock market, it pays over time, all this sort of vested interest because it continues to grow and it will pay you back over and over and over forever. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So yeah, um, I think everyone's got the point on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one of the other things was, um, getting backlinks and i know we had so spoke we had spoken earlier um you were going to talk a little bit about some opportunity and you know backlinks just so everyone realizes i think most people understand but it's basically finding third-party sites where they can link back to you to your website and build up your authority um i like to say you know like if you're running for president right you need to be, be able to become the president of the united states you need votes you need people to vote for you that's essentially like if you're creating a website to be popular or to win, you need links, right? And not all votes are the same, you know? If you have someone like Oprah Winfrey voting for you and she's got millions of people who are going to copy her, that's an incredibly influential vote to get. Yes. The same thing with backlinks. When you're creating links that point to your site, you know, not all backlinks are the same. You get a link from a certain site that has a lot of influence and a lot of people go there. You're, that is better than getting 10, 20 links from a sites that no one ever visits that are kind of crappy or spammy, right? Yeah. So yeah. There's a lot of different types of links you can get. So I'm really keen to hear from you what type of links you think real estate agents should be trying to get um, and how they do that. True. Yeah. So the first set of links that almost every small business gets are those citation links. So like links from yellow pages, rate my agent, uh, all that stuff. Right. Um, those ones often include a link back to your website. So the thing about those is that those are just setting the, the table. It's like you get a seat at the table because you're now on par with the vast majority of other realtors because they all have those too. So what you need with links is that next level. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get those. In order to get the seat at the table, you have to have those, like basically start there. Then other links will have a huge impact and, and they're kind of hard to get. So there's a few strategies that I would go with. Like, why would someone link to your realtor website? There's like, I don't know how many realtors in the city. Why would I link to yours? So one of the ones I like to use is particularly, it works right, really well with like mortgage brokers, realtors, moving companies, are these sort of link cooperation stuff where it's like, let's say you have a specific moving company you always re reference and refer, that company should be linking to you from their website because you know you can just go through your phone, you've got your phone in your hand, you're flipping through your contacts, you're looking for anyone that owns a business that has a website. I know that person, I have a relationship with that person. You can probably find five links in your phone contact right now. It's the mortgage broker that you typically refer, it's the, it's the, uh, the lender you often refer, it's the moving company, any of these sort of side businesses. It's maybe even the cookie company that you send cookies to your, to your uh, clients after you close the sale, like whatever you do. And so you can often just be like, hey, can you link to us? Because it's like, you know them. You might even find like your nephew runs a business and <laughs> he's got a website, be like, hey, can you drop a link in there? So anyone that you know personally, of course, would be an easy link. Uh, another great way to get links are testimonials. So for example, let's say every time you close a sale, you buy this gift basket from this company 
that then sends it out to things. You could write a testimonial for that gift basket company that they're going to put on their website that links back to your website. So, you know, realtor Barry Jenkins says that our gift baskets are best and you know, here's, here's his picture and a link back to him. So testimonial links are, are a nice way to get it. Like any businesses you do business with pitch them on the idea of a testimonial. And it's amazing how few people do this. Like White Spark, we have over a hundred thousand customers and in the lifetime of our business, we've probably received like, 10 to 15 from smart SEOs that said, hey, I use your service. Can I give you a testimonial on your, on your homepage? And you know what our response is every time? It's like, yes, give us that testimonial. We want that on our website. It's a great way to build links. And all this, like you would think, especially since we cater to so many SEOs that we would get so many requests, but not enough people are doing that. So I love testimonial. It's a really easy way to get a link. Another big one is sponsorships. So you can sponsor uh, a local charity a local uh, business association, like a 5K run, different events. There's like opportunities to sponsor your local theater groups, that kind of stuff, right? So when you sponsor them, um, one, it can be direct branding for you and you actually get exposure to their audience. And so, you know, it's like, it's branding, it's, it's business building, but you can also get a link. And so what we often do is we'll do a search for, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna type it into the chat. This this is the Google search you want to write. Uh, it's uh, site colon, or no, um, in title sponsors city name. I'm just going to put city name like this. This, this search right here, so if I ran that and uh, I'll do in title sponsors Denver. It's amazing, it's, it works every time. So uh, entitled sponsors Denver, I'm gonna paste a link to this into the chat. So this, this key phrase, if you look at that, there you go. You just found everybody that's listing their sponsors on their website. And so now you've just built that huge resource of all of those places that are accepting sponsorship. So you can sponsor by you know donating money or whatever. And so now then the next step is, I will uh, send them an email and be like, hey, I'd like to sponsor your event and uh, what are the sponsorship options? And almost every time you can get the price down. You'd be like, ooh, I, wasn't, I didn't really plan to spend, um, I didn't really plan to spend, you know, $400. Maybe I don't need this full package where I get into your, your magazine and your mailing list. I just need the web, I, I'm just, maybe I'll just do a smaller sponsorship where I just uh, get the website link and uh, I could do that for $200. And so that's, that's, uh, that's one way to do it. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Um, we did have one question. Um, no, he wasn't sharing screen, but in, in the chat, um, it in the chat. Yeah. Just click on that link. You're going to be able to see exactly what Darren was talking about. Um, so what about blogging? Um, what are your thoughts on blogging for SEO? Yeah. So, well, there's two, there's two angles there. So blogging as a link building tactic is interesting. So if you, for example, wrote a piece of content that you would then publish on, let's say your mortgage broker's website, then that of course could have your bio link and link back to you. And so it would, it would, that's called guest blogging. And there's great value in that. Um, the other thing is blogging on your own website. And so what I see happen, and I call this an SEO mistake, is when people are pumping out once a week, three to 400 word little blog posts on their website. And so that stuff I think drives almost zero value because it's thin content, it's not engaging, you're not gonna get a ton of a lot of traffic to those pages, you're not gonna get anyone linking to those pages. I would rather see people invest all of that like weekly content and do one piece a month or one piece a quarter that was much more substantial. So it really built it up. And before I would even touch the blog, I would do those pages like the one you showed, those that waterfront properties pages. And I would do a page on the, this neighborhood and a page on these types of things, like golf course properties in Denver. You know, like that content is like a thousand times better than any little blog post you put out. So focus on the service pages too. And don't even go to your blog until you finish that. Like once you get like everything you can even think of in terms of like main service pages that are actually part of your navigation, then that those pages are the best place to invest in content. Your blog could come after, and I wouldn't do small posts. I would do 
substantial posts. Even if you can make them research back, do you add some statistics to that? Now you got something like percentage of uh, drops in sales over the last over the last month, over COVID, then you can actually even, so you can create that content. Now we're talking about some work here, and lots of realtors maybe don't have time to put in the work, but you created a great piece of content that includes real research about homes that are selling. You have the MLS, you can pull data out of that, and you can actually run statistics and then write content about that. Then you can outreach to local media, and that could get picked up and linked to from all kinds of sources. So that's a much better, content strategy than the little blog post once a week. To be honest with you, like as soon as the conversation starts going in this direction is why I never did SEO. It's like, it's scary. It's overwhelming. It's, it's it sounds work. like it never, uh, yeah. It's like, I don't want to do that. You so like for the, to do it. Yeah. well, okay. So for the agent that doesn't want to, doesn't enjoy writing, um, yeah. but would like to try to, you know, throw some money at this, Outside of hiring somebody, do you feel like that sponsorship play of just getting your, your website domain on other people's websites, do you think if you just want to spend a little bit of money that that's a, a good first step? I really do. I think there's huge value there. Um, and you can, there's like a million companies out there that'll write this golf course homes content for you. So you could definitely just do a little Googling, find some content writing companies. I, I can't recommend one right off the top of my head. Um, uh, we work we work with a company called Upscribed, but I, I think they only work with big agencies. Mm -hmm. But uh, this content stuff could definitely be written for you. There's a million people that do it. And so uh, you can definitely find that content writing. But the sponsorship links, once you kind of get your review strategy dialed in, you've optimized your listing, you've optimized your, um, your, uh, your citations, so reviews, Google listing citations, that stuff is kind of like a one-time thing. Like your review strategy, you have to constantly ask for it, but you've kind of got your strategy dialed in. Your GMB, your ongoing task after that is content links and continuing pumping stuff into GMB. So that's like Google posts on GMB, uh, staying up with the latest on GMB. And so once you kind of get the basics in place, and so you could just really dial in on those links. That would be a, a great way to, to increase your relevancy and in, increase your authority and rank better in Google, even if you didn't add any more content to your site. But you could add content to your site pretty easily if you just outsource it. And you, you can get people that'll write the content, get the images, give it to you in a format, you can just copy and paste right into Squarespace or whatever you're using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another good thing, you know, you can always try, look, especially since COVID now, there are a lot of people at home sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Um, yeah. Do you use like Craigslist or something just for look for a local copywriter, someone who's a, yeah. a content writer who lives locally, like a stay at home mom, anyone who may just want to make up just a few bucks extra, but they're really good with writing and research. Sure. I, would, I would outsource it to them and say, look, you know, these are the types of neighborhoods. These are the types of searches that we want to go after. I need content around this. Like, just to give you guys some examples, um, you know, we're doing like new condos for sale and we're picking an area, right, inside Virginia Beach. Um, and then we're doing a price range, 250 to 500,000. So we're doing multiple price ranges in this, for the search term. We're also doing waterfront homes for sale. Um, also doing um, golf course homes for sale. You pick based on what your marketplace is like and go after those niche terms and create landing pages. But the one thing we learned since we did this last time was just doing that by themselves, having the, like, the right headline, and then showing all the properties, they weren't ranking very well. But you see, so you've got to add in some, you've got to put some meat on the table, right? Or on the plate. So add in some content with some links to local type things. So there's actually more substance to the page and there's more keywords in here. See, it mentions Virginia Beach multiple more times now, um, as well as other local businesses. Yep. Um, and those sort of links out, and all of these extra photos, and these additional content on the page, show Google that they can trust this page a lot more, and you're gonna get much high, rank much higher in the search results. I realize it takes more time, but that's actually a good thing because most other agents won't ever do it. And you can just go and find someone. It's not hard to find someone locally, especially right now who can write this stuff for you. There's also quite a few companies who just 
focus on this or specialize on this. Um, and if you want some help or guidance, you know, reach out to me. If you want to share some of the pages, say, what about this? What about that? Um, let me know. You don't have to put thousands and thousands of words. You know, 350, 500 words is enough on a page, I think, to make it um, unique and special and, and different. And then you can just spin that out into, you know, the 250 to 500, the 500 to a million, and do different variations of it. Um, but this is something where you're adding more pages to your website, where Google's now finding more stuff from you that's going to drive more traffic to your site that indirectly helps with your local SEO as well. Um, because one of the things they look at for your local SEO is do you, are you producing content on your website? Is your website active? Do you get traffic? And what we've noticed is the clients who are actively investing in content creation and doing that right, as well as getting reviews and doing all the other things, then you're unstoppable. Yep. You know? And you're not just cool. generating local content, at, local SEO at that stage. This is all SEO people looking for properties as well as the agents. So you're really- What about the Wailopo blog posts? Yeah, no. Um, the, the reason the Wailopo blog posts don't really help you is because we write these for everybody um, and it's duplicate content. So this is something, yeah. and it's not, it has nothing to do with your local market. It just has to do with real estate in general, okay? Sure. So these are great content that you may Good want. examples, like the, the look of this, like if you're going to write your own stuff, these are, this is a great way to do it. So you could use this as inspiration for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, but just going, you know, and then what you want to do is tie it back to your account. So when you're posting inside here, inside, um, yep. so, you know, your Google My Business, now you click on it. Now you can link back to these pages, right? That you've created. So now you're actually creating links as well. And so Google now is connecting the dots between the local and then your website. And so that's something that we have really um, learned from last time that is helpful. It's definitely more work. Um, but in order to be able, you know, if you're in a competitive market and if you want to win, you've got to put in the work. I mean, SEO is just, it's not a magic you know, silver bullet yeah. anymore. Or hire someone to do it. And yeah. I, yeah, I just looked on our, our version in Canada of Craigslist. It's called Kijiji. And I just searched like writers and like a thousand. So many it's, writers. So many writers. So many writers. Yeah. Um, Steve is asking, is there a way to add products to my page? Um, oh, yes. Please do. Well, actually, maybe not. Because one of the things with products in GMB is that not everyone gets them. So it's really annoying. Like, we see Barry's got them, he can go products, and he's got this section, and they're fantastic. But not everybody gets products, and so they're rolling it out. Everyone should get it eventually. Um, and so when you can get it, it's, it's really valuable to do, because it just really makes your listing stand up. Yeah. Because I really have to jump, because I have to do another, uh, another call. Yeah. All right, no worries. We're, we're at an hour already, but you know, everyone, um, let me just share my screen. So, but yeah, if you go to WhiteSpark, if you use code YLOPO2020, um, Darren's giving a 10% discount on any of their products yep. or services. So if you need yep. to use that, you can. Um, but thanks, mate. Appreciate your wisdom. Um, I'm gonna stay nice on, you. there's a lot of questions here. I'm gonna stay on, see if I can power through some of these questions, but. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy to answer any of them if you wanna like just ping me on Twitter or, or like do a, an email or you CC me and, and the person asking the question, anything that, that you can't handle. But man, Kiwi, you seem to know your SEO pretty good. So I think you got it all. Yeah, he has a, the, the handle SEO Kiwi. So, I mean, yeah. he has to have it down, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. All right, well, there's right. anything Thanks, that I Aaron. can answer, please let me know. Yeah. Will do. Thanks, mate. All right, really Appreciate enjoyed it. it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Um, so let me just answer a few more questions here, guys. Um, do you have any copy of this card that we can see as an example? Um, I Let me get a copy of one of those cards and I'll share it with you guys. Um, maybe we'll even create a template that you guys can just, a swipe file, you can rip off and use. Um, I really well, like that idea. Well, you know, something that I, um, I'm trying to find it. Uh, I've been using, um, yeah, blue dot social. 
And basically it's a plastic card with uh, an NFC near field communication chip. Here I'll share. And essentially, oh, I can't share while you're sharing. Can you let me share please? Yes. Thanks Mike. So I think his idea is great um, and you can do that. For me, uh, if you just tap this card on, um, it's uh, like the iPhone from three years ago through today. So, you know, basically they get this like invitation to add your contact and then they get a link to all of your um, profiles. And so, um, you know, the, all the review things and stuff like that. And, you know, it's been a, a fun, catchy way to keep engagement going. I also think Moo, let's see, Moo NFC, Moo has the same thing. Yeah. So, I mean, they've had it for a long time, actually, but um, it's the, the, the phrase is uh, NFC and it's near field communication. And uh, most every Android for the last like five years has got it, iPhone for the last three. Got it, got it. Okay, um, so answering some more questions here. Um, is there a difference between Mars.com and WhiteSpark? They both do SEO analyzing. Um, yeah, they do both do SEO analyzing. I found um, Mars has a lot of automated tools and they just didn't work very well. Um, so I probably use Mars for about 50 companies um, and so much automation, you know, Getting names changed or addresses changed or different things on all these different sites is just very, very tedious. Um, I like WhiteSpark because they manually do it and they do, they have a team of people who do it all for you um, rather than a tool that tries to do everything. Um, and they only charge you one time. Um, so, you know, that was just personal preference. Uh, I've tried both. Um, let's see, can we use video reviews to get Google? Um, I would use you so you can't get video reviews inside Google they only do written reviews but I would use video to help you get reviews um, make you stand out make it more personal because people are just gonna see that and feel like okay uh, it really makes you stand out you got in the effort to do a little video it's gonna make them more want to take the effort to go and write a review um, how important is the name for GMB just started a team the Brecken group so the most important thing there is that your name that you use, you stay consistent with it. Um, and it's not going to change, you know, two months from now or a year from now. Because once you start switching names around and it's different in different places, um, Google gets confused. Um, so Barry, if the big, brand, uh, the big brands are what comes up, then I am called a banker. Is it ever possible then to compete? It's totally possible to compete. Um, it's, you know, you just need to be doing all these little things, get, getting reviews, getting um, your citations cleaned up, using the actual GMB. So under, I have seen many, many um, times when there's just a little one person shop who's outranking a lot of the big brokerages. Um, but it's cause they're all in with it and they're doing everything right. Um, what can you do to share the address with 50 people other than get your own address? I don't understand the question. Um, my team comes up as give back team. Just wondering if it should try and use them. This, my area is just so saturated. Um, how important it is for the blog post to be original content? Um, so in order, so this is from Terry, in order to rank, you do want your blog posts to be original content. Um, if it's duplicate content, you're probably just not gonna get a lot of traffic. But if you've got a lot of people reading your blogs, um, using your website, then they, you know, it's okay to have duplicate content because they're gonna see it anyway. But if you're specifically trying to write content that gets fresh eyeballs and new people seeing it, you've gotta make it unique, you've gotta make it special, that way it stands out. Um, and now other people might start linking to it and Google gives you some love for that. Um, okay, so God, there's a lot of questions. Kiwi, everyone in my firms uses the same address. I thought I heard you say it wasn't good for Google, my biz. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you really, you know, this is designed to get one address, one business, one location ranking really, really well. If you've got multiple people in the office competing for the same address, um, it just makes it messy. So, um, you know, I don't really have a good answer for that. You know, I would say unless you're the business owner or you're the only person in your team, you probably shouldn't invest too heavily in this because um, it can easily be taken away from you once the business owner sort of wants to prioritize it. They're going to want to own that number one spot. Um, so look, um, any other questions, um, you know, you guys can email me. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I don't want to take up everyone's time. Um, you know, we're already 12, 10 minutes over. Um, Barry, any parting thoughts? Yeah, so look, this is overwhelming for people, okay? It is. And I think you should walk away from this by saying, there's a whole nother organic lead source that is available to me. And you don't have to be an expert. You can throw some money on it. WhiteSpark has been managing mine for what, four months now? No, three months? Yeah, more like six months. Six months. And they have revolutionized my Google My Business. Um, and it is producing opportunity. You don't have to buy WhiteSpark. But I know for me, I, um, I'm benefiting greatly from it. So just know that if you're not messing with this, um, that uh, you're leaving money on the table. And the fact that it's hard, you got to get a postcard mailed. Like it's just annoying. That's why nobody's doing it. So just do the things that nobody else is doing to get the results that nobody else is getting. You feel me, Kiwi? That's I like deep, it. Dude. I like That's it deep, a lot. Man. Yeah, look, My. we're not selling this as a product. This isn't anything we're asking you to sign up for or pay money for, but we realize how important it is for a lot of people. So we want to show you what it takes. And more importantly, show you that, look, it, it takes work. Um, but it's not, you know, you've now got all the information you need to be successful. Um, so you've just got to put in the effort and time to do it. But that's what SEO is these days. You can't just outsource it and have someone do everything and you're going to rank number one. It requires you to get your reviews, which you generally need to take control of. You know, you need to, you know, um, you know, start building pages and doing all these other things that we just spoke about. So it is work. Um, but look, like Barry said, once you rank number one in your location, you're number one on that map. Um, or even if you're number two or number three, you get a significant amount of business. Um, from people who are looking for a real estate agent right now, which is, you know, generally it's because they're looking to buy or sell something. Um, so it's probably one of the best leads you can get if you can get to that spot. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it, it's work and it's custom work. So hopefully that answers a lot of the questions. Um, but yeah, this is part two. I don't know if we, you know, we're gonna, we keep doing this and we've got about 10 clients we're working with. So that's why we're learning. This is why we're testing and we're trying everything ourselves. So I can come back and teach you guys as much as possible. Um, but we're seeing a lot of great results. Anything is possible. You know, I would say one other thing is if you are not in the city center, like for example, you know, I live in Marina Del Rey, but if I wanted to rank for real estate agent in Los Angeles, you know, Los Angeles is 20 miles away. I'm in Marina Del Rey. It's going to be really, really difficult because my office is in Marina Del Rey. It's not in downtown Los Angeles. All those real estate agents in downtown Los Angeles have got an advantage because they're very close to the city center of Los Angeles. So that is another thing to be considerate of. Um, but certainly in Marina Del Rey and surrounding areas, your service areas, you can rank for those. But it does get harder and harder the further away you get from the city center, if that makes sense. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. This is going to be uh, put up on wellopa.com forward slash media by the end of the day. Appreciate it. Have a good one. You too, Mike. Bye-bye.